Hello darlings, Mike von Birdingham here and today I'm going to be talking you through my vocal pedal setup for live singing. Well, the reason for doing this video is I've had several requests from people asking if I could do a more detailed look into the pedal that I use for my live sounds, show some of the patches and actually show how to set the sounds up as apparently they're quite difficult to find online. This is the TC Helicon Voice Live 3. This thing is an absolute beast, a behemoth, a monster of a pedal. And to be completely honest, I only use a fraction of what this thing can do. For example, I don't use any of the looping effects. I don't use the guitar section of it. Um, there's so much that this pedal can do that I just do not need. I just happen to get this pedal at a really good rate second hand. But there are lower down versions of this that will do everything you need to do for probably under half the price. So have a look around, especially at the TC Helicon range. There are some really good pedals. You don't need all of this just for getting some basic usable sounds. But we're going to dive in and I will show you what I can. One thing, so there are so many different options on this pedal that some of the effects would require a video just for them th on their own. So things like harmonies, I may do a video later down the line because the harmonies on this can be very tricky and require sometimes a lot of patience and a lot of fiddling about with. But for now, we are going to crack on and I shall show you a few of my settings and how I use them live. Here we go. The first thing, when we turn the pedal on, we are greeted with this lovely screen. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take you into the setup mode. So we're going to press setup. And here we have various options. We have input, output, guitar, MIDI, tone and system. The first thing I want to show you in the input is the mic gain. This is, as you would expect, adds more gain to the microphone. So if I start to turn it up, you'll hear the microphone starts to get louder and louder and louder. Turn it back down and it shall go quieter, quieter and quieter. Now there are pluses and minuses to using the mic gain. If you want to boost your vocal or you've got a very weak voice, boosting the mic gain is very good because it will give you more clarity and more signal. The only problem is it will also boost all the noise around you. So if you've got a very loud band smashing its way through behind you, it's going to pick up a hell of a lot of that. Also, something to do with this pedal. It took us a while playing around with it, and I think we've got it sorted, but I'm not sure. There were different things that would cut in and affect the actual signal itself. Now, it seemed to be that if the mic gain was too high, there was like a, an automatic cut-in feature. I think it may have been to do with this mic clip protection. Um, if you turn that on, I think what that actually does is if the signal is too much, it will try and limit it, which unfortunately, if you've got a loud band and you're trying to sing, it was cutting in and the signal was going all over the place, which really wasn't what I wanted. So I turn that off and I keep my mic gain on zero. It does mean the signal that that's coming out of the pedal that goes to your mixing desk is going to be quite low but I found that works better than the alternative of boosting the mic too much in the pedal. So let's have a little scroll down. So we use this rotating dial to scroll up and down. Global pitch correct. Um, I do not use pitch correct, so therefore I have it on zero. Auxiliary gain, I don't use that for anything. Monitor gain, I don't use the monitor effect on this either. Um, room sense auto detect. I have that off as well. I think that was one of the reasons as well this had interference because the room sense obviously is detecting what's going on. It's got a little microphone down here uh, and I think it's got something here as well. And again, it's you don't want the pedal trying to predict or guess what's going on in the environment. There are some things on here that you would want that, for example, some of the harmonies, you can have it so that your guitar actually pro helps program and guide the harmonies to be locking in with the chords you're singing and playing. But 
I don't use any of that. Lead delay, I've set to none. So literally everything is down or off on this input setting. And I have my mic gain to zero. The output, XLR output mode, XLR output is line level. Now you can change that. You can have it at mic level, which to be honest is uh, really quiet by the sound of it. So I've got it set to line level. Um, talk trim, I've got set to zero. USB output mode stereo. I don't use the USB um, pack sort of effects on here or the USB settings, so I don't need to use that. The main important thing, guitar, so we don't need, MIDI, don't need, the system, global tempo, no, global preset, I don't use that, global key scale, off. All these are global settings, which mean they will generally have an effect on all of your patches. So I turn them off. Global natural play source, off, off. Tuner reference, yep, so that's 440, that's normal. Hit behavior, dynamic, auxiliary in live, contrast 50. Some of these I don't know what they do. So I just have them set like that. And we're going to go into tone. Now, this one is very important because this is where we find our compression. As you can see at the moment, I have tone switched on. If I turn the tone off, you can hear that the microphone drops down one hell of a lot. That is because while I'm doing things like narrating and talking, I have a lot of compression on the microphone to level out the signal. So if I turn that back on, you'll hear my voice comes back and it's a lot more balanced. If I turn it off, and if I talk really quietly, you can hear it goes down. Then if I shout loud, you can hear it gets louder. If I turn it on like that, I can talk very quietly and it's still quite clear. And if I talk loud, yes, it gets a bit louder, but not too loud. So that is what the tone button does. The tone button or tone switch turns on all of these effects below it. Now for general singing, I would have this turned to off because if you've got compression on and all these different things, it's gonna be picked up. So rather it will pick up everything that's going on around you as well. Using a lot of compression means you want to be in a very quiet environment. Otherwise it will just pick up your drummer, your guitar, it'll pick up the whole band and you really don't want that. As you can see here, I leave my shape and compressor to manual to manual. I, on the compression mode, I leave it to manual because adaptive, I don't want that again. Anything, anything adaptive will mean it will try and change as time goes on. It will try and predict and you don't want that. So I'm gonna keep it on manual. Now, for those of you who don't know about compression and what it does, I'll give you a quick example. If I turn the compression threshold to zero, you will hear that if I talk quietly, it goes quiet. If I talk loud, it gets louder. But you can hear there's a massive difference between my quiet and my loud. If I bring this threshold back, what it does, it squishes down the sound. So if you imagine a sound wave, if you're looking at it um, on a computer or any kind of recording, the, the wave will have peaks and troughs all the way through it. What the compressor does, it tries to squash down the peaks and bring up the troughs. So it um, basically levels out the sound and tries to make it more consistent. Now, the more I turn the threshold to the minus, the more it will compress the sound. The ratio here is the percent of, well, is the ratio of how much of the signal will be compressed. So if we turned it to, for example, one to one, that is a one to one compression. Oh, oh, oh. It doesn't seem to sound very good. So if I turn, I generally have it on about 3.5 to 3.6, something like that. If I was to turn it all the way up to four, you can hear that it's, there's very little dynamic there at all. So I 
like to um, turn it about to 3.4, 3.5, something like that. Now, compression is a bit of a hard thing to describe, especially with the ratio. If I've got that wrong, feel free to correct me out there, people. If you can expra explain this all, by all means, do. I've been using these effects and things for a long, long time, but I have limited knowledge of these things, so I'm not professing to be an expert. So for when I'm just talking and doing narrative work, I like to have a lot of compression to really level the vocal out, and that's where I have my ratio set on this pedal. So noise gate, ah, now, is this a noise gate? I think it might be. I'm presuming. Let's have a look here. So if I turn the noise gate up like that, no, is that doing anything? No, no, bringing it down. Let's have a look, see what happens. Gate, 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 gate. Let's turn all these up and see where we go. No. Aha, right. Yes, yeah, so this is a noise gate. I do not use noise gates, mainly because the fact is, again, I don't want anything interfering with the sound. I want the microphone to pick up whatever I'm putting in into it, whether it's bad, whether it's good, the least amount of uh, pedal interference with its different gates and all that kind of stuff, I do not want. So I keep that to off. So we've got EQ mode. I haven't got anything set on the EQ mode. If I wanted to change the EQ, I could add some low in. I could add some mids in. I could add some highs in if you listen to that. So that's very handy if you need that kind of thing. But generally, I let the sound man do it on the desk so he can set it to how he wants. So that is the tone setting. So again, if I was singing live, I would turn the tone off. And then if I was singing really loud, I'd have the microphone further away. And then if I was singing quietly, I'd have my mouth closer to the microphone. But just so that you can hear me more clearly, I will turn the tone on. The de for those of you who don't know what the de is, what it does, it takes the s out of your voice. So if I say, for example, suffering succotage, you can hear there's a lot of S's in there. If I crank this de right up to its maximum, suffering, succotage, can you hear it's dipping out on the S's? So it's trying to get rid of them. So again, I don't want anything interfering in that kind of thing with my voice. If I've got, if I keep saying my S's too much, try and say a Z instead. So instead of suffering, succotage, suffering, succotage, use a bit more of a Z and you'll get less S in your voice. So I keep that de down to a zero, the compressor is on manual, the shape I leave on manual, and the tone is on just for this when I'm narrating. So if I was singing, ding, tone off. Right, so that is all the setup we need. Now, you can um, also set up the volume of your microphone using the hold for mic gain function. And what you would do, you would press this setup button and hold it, on the display, you will get a message saying, sing your loudest. And that will preset what it thinks your gain needs to be. Again, I don't use this. If I want to adjust the gain, I will do it manually here on the input settings. Right, so that is the setup function. I've just run through with you there. I'm going to go into some of the patches now and show you how I set them up. So we are going to press vocal, and we're going to press it again, just so I go to my first patch. Now for me, it's incredibly important for a pedal that I use for you to be able to save your effects in patches. But it's also very important for me to be able to switch individual effects on and off when I need them. That's why this pedal is really good for that kind of thing. Um, so this is my basic preset, also known as standard. What I have here is a bog standard vocal sound. There is nothing on this at present. It's just the vocal comes in, the vocal goes out, nothing extravagant. But if I press this button, it, it triggers, triggers some, some delay, delay and, and reverb. reverb. 
The reason I do this is for if I like to sing a really high soaring vocal. So, for example, something like a Jump by Van Halen. At the start, he does that real high, you know, sort of heavy rock metal sort of scream and rise up through the notes, real soaring note. So this is why I like to use this. So if I press that. If I was to do it without, it doesn't have quite the same effect. So I like to use this setting just for if I need one of those big soaring kind of power metal rock notes. So let's show how we set this up. So we press the vocal button and we are in to the settings. Now, there's a lot of settings in here we are not going to use or touch on. So we've got harmony, we've got double, the delay we use, the reverb we use, but tuning, synth, transducer, U-mod, choir, stutter, all of these other things, button maps, expression pedals. Uh, the preset I will come back to because this is quite handy, especially for certain songs. So what we are going to use in this song as you saw, is my delay and reverb. Now, one of the first things I will show you, if I scroll up to the top, on the delay function. Here, you will notice it has off, on, hit on, hit off. That corresponds to this button here. So I've set this to come on when the hit button is pressed. If I hit on, on. it comes on, comes on, hit off. If I turn it, to off, what that means is when I first go into this patch um, preset, the delay will be off. So if I want to turn it on, on I have to, I press, have to it press it manually. manually. If I have it set on, on and save, and it, save like it, this, it like this, then when then I come when into, I come this, into preset, this preset, it will already, it will already be, turned, be on. turned on. So for me, for me, I want it on hit on because I want it to also trigger off one of these other effects as well. So if you look where I go to reverb, you'll see I've got hit on there as well. So let's go back to the delay. Right, there's a lot of parameters in this delay setting that I do not use or that I may have just left as bog standard. So let's have a quick look at the main ones I use and the important ones. So here, the rate of delay we use. So if I turn delay on, on. ah, ah. So you can hear there was about three delayed notes uh, 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 going on there. If I change, uh, 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 go down. Uh, 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 so that's back to what I had it. One, 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 two, 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 two. Yeah. yeah. Oh, 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 oh. La, 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 la. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that sounds horrible. Yeah, that sounds horrible. Yeah. So you can so see, you can, you can change, 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 change the values, the values and you'll get, and different, you'll get notes. different notes. I. I, I, I. Oh, that's too oh, much that's now. Too right, let's leave it on there, for, it on now. there for, now. for now. The feedback will be the amount. If I turn, if this, I turn up, this up. Uh, 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 you can hear how long that lasts. So the higher the value is, the longer the delays will last. If I turn if it, I right, turn down, it right down, one, one, you can hear, you can hear it's dropped down, drop a, down lot a lot. So just, just almost, almost a single bounce. Single bounce. Uh, uh, uh. I've dialed I've in dialed a little in bit, a bit more, bit of, more it of it there. there. Also, also, if I crank that up crank to, say, up to 40, say 40, I can then bring the level down, and that will drop the actual level of the delay. Two. Ah. So you can hear, as I turn it down, it's disappeared. If I bring it up, here it comes back. So I would say, for what I want on this, I am going to drop that down, because I wanted about three bounces. So one. That's too many. Two. 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 It's 
Still too many. One. Two. That's about right. There's just a few bounces, and I don't want any more than that. And I think the level's about... Yeah, the level's about okay. So let's turn that off. Right, let's scroll down. Source tempo, tempo 126. Let's see if I changing that does anything. Two. Two. One. One. Okay, so reducing the tempo reduces the speed of the bounces. Filter style. Two. 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 Not amazing amount of difference. Two. Oh, that's got a bit of a thinner sound to it. One. Okay, so you can hear there's different sound effects for what you would need. I would stick with digital or analog. We'll stick with digital for now. Uh, let's turn that off again. Right, so you can see all of that. The tempo will change the speed of the bounces. The filter style will change the sound of the delays. Um, now, these I leave as they are. I haven't touched these at all. So they will be to do with the, I suppose you've got delay left, delay right, to do with the panning and how they'll respond. Um, we can try having a little dabble, see what happens. Two. Okay, can you hear that's out of sync now? So if I set them the same. Two. If I change them. Two. One. Yeah, you can see, so you get a different kind of bouncing effect. So if you want it to be stereo and make sure that the delay is working together, make sure your settings are the same. So you can see, one, now you can hear, it um, is exactly the same straight down the middle. Again, depending on what you're doing, you might want a kind of bouncing effect from side to side in your delay. So you'd have to play around with these settings to so it would suit your needs. So again, we've got more settings here. We've got low cuts, high cuts, EQ input settings. I haven't really touched on these. I'm not overly sure on what they all do. So maybe down the line, say when I learn a bit more about this pedal and what it can do, I shall do more in-depth videos on each setting and really show you how it works. But for me, that is all I need to know, those settings there. I will go on to reverb now. Now reverb, again, there's loads of parameters I will not really use on this, but let's turn it on. So I'm using the Broadway Hall because it's got a nice, sort of a quite distant depth to it. And for this kind of vocal where I'm doing a big soaring vocal, I want it to sound really deep. The decay, if I tweak that, soon. So again, the decay is the amount of time it takes for the sound to decay and fade away. So the higher the setting, the longer the sound will stick around for. So I don't want too much because the Broadway Hall is already quite a, uh, a long reverb, long tail sound. So I'm going to leave that as it is. The level again is the volume of the reverb. So tweak it to suit your needs. Right, early reflections, tail and pre-delay and all this, I don't touch those, I just leave them at zero. I don't want too many dials and things to play with. These ones up here, the decay and level are enough for me. You've got different colorings you can add to it and different frequencies. Again, I don't use those, I just leave them all at zero. Um, all of these are set to zero with 100%. I do not touch any of these. So I just stick with these up the top here. Those are the important ones for me. So when I press my hit button, both of those come on. Yeah! And that does for when I want to do one of those big soaring vocals. Right, so let's go back to my main patch. Now I do use some double occasionally. I don't use very much of it. But I tend to use it for things like if I'm singing kind of Ozzy Osbourne or something where you need this sort of um, 
I'm not the kind of person you think I am. So you can hear it doubles up the voice and it gives you quite a nice effect. Now, if we go in to the actual double effect by pressing the vocal button, let's have a look at this. Okay, I don't use this very often. I am not soup, uh, sort of a superbly au fait with such a thing. So the different effects we can have are, if I turn it on, we've got four tight voices, two wide voices, one voice, one loose, um, four voices wide, mixed doubles, there's all sorts of different presets. I have mine on four voices tight. The humanizing, the higher you turn that up, the more the other voices will have variations and dynamics. So if I try and sing, it just sounds like a swarm of really weird bees. So if I turn the humanized down, if I turn it off, you can hear that it pretty much kills the sound of the double. If I bring it up a bit, say 20%, you can hear there's little variations, but if I sing an Aussie lyric again, I'm not the kind of person you think I am. That would probably be about the level that I would like. So there is a bit of a variation in there, but not so much that it just sounds all over the show. So if we scroll down a little bit, now we've got different style types. This is where I'm not completely sort of 100% up to scratch, but I can show you an example and see what happens with them. So if I turn the double on, so we've got it on human style tight at the moment. So that means all the backing uh, double vocals will be quite tight with the original front one. If I put it natural, let's have a go. Let's try. Put it natural. Right, you can definitely hear there is more wavering behind there. Put it to relaxed. Even more wavering. Loose. That just sounds absolutely horrible. So you can also have it off as well. Ignore that cutting in and out. That is due to, again, the vocal input level because I'm not singing really loud. If I was to be louder, oh, you can hear it doesn't do all that ball, ball, sort of popping and noise interference. So let's keep it on tight for now so that it keeps fairly tight to the original. Now, Portamento, oh, now that's following fairly tight to my vocal. Let's try turning that right down. I can't hear much difference in that. Let's try the smoothing. I'm not the kind of person you think I am. I think this effect will probably have more different on the vocals, say, when they're put into their other Let's try it on the loose. Yeah, that just sounds horrible. So I am going to leave it on. I had it set to tight and portamento 20. I'm not the kind of person. That'll do for me. That's any more than that would be overkill. You can set your individual because obviously these, uh, depending on which setting you have, like have four voices tight, you can have each voice panned left and right, you can have each voice at a different level, you can change the genders to male or female or just zero, um, you can have the voices singing in unison, or you can have them, for example, an octave down. Oh, oh, oh. One of them up. Oh, oh. Doesn't seem to be doing it. Oh, oh. The octave down is far more noticeable. Oh, oh. Let's try and all of them an octave up, see what happens. Oh, 
Oh, oh, now you can hear it. Right, so I have them all set to unison because I want them all to be on the same register. I've got all those set to 20. So they're not zero, they're all on 0% smooth. So that is the settings I have got for this. And for my doubling, that works fine. So sorry that one wasn't too super informative. There's a lot in there. I need to do more research. And as you guys have noticed, there's not a lot of videos out there on people really breaking down the individual effects. So the more I play around with them, I will put other videos out showing you what else can be done while playing around. Right, so let's go back. So that is my main patch that I use for generally most of my stuff. If I go to the next preset, I've got my 80s reverb. Again, all I've done is I've got my delay and reverb on set to, let's have a look. So the delay and reverb, the delay on this one is set to quarter note triplet. Feedback is on 7%. The level is quite low on minus 26. Uh, the tempo is 121 BPM. Filter style is analog. Again, the left and the right are matched. You can see there, quarter note triplets, 330 milliseconds for the delays. So that's the same either side. So all of this, the low cut, high cut, are just what they are. I'll leave them there for you can see them if you want to set anything up similar. These other ones, I haven't touched. So there we go. So that is what I've got for my delay on there. And the reverb, I've got a smaller reverb. We have a wooden chamber. The decay is at three seconds and the level is at minus five. Early reflections are turned off. The low color, high color, high factor. They're dialed in at minus 35, minus 25, minus 11, diffuse at minus 12. What probably happened with this setting is I found a reverb I liked and then I just slightly modified it to suit what I wanted. But so you're more than welcome to copy the settings I have here. Um, duck threshold minus 20 dB. Oh, I don't know what half of this stuff is. So that's what I've got for that reverb setting. And that does my 80s sound. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip forward a couple of settings. I've got one for Teenage Dirtbag, but that requires harmonies. So as I say, that will be a whole video in itself. Now I've got a setting here for weathering heights. Now, generally when I'm singing in my weathering heights Kate Bush tone, let's turn those on for a second, my voice is quieter. So what I can do, and I referred to this earlier, if I go into the effect and go right over, to preset, I can actually alter the vocal level trim of this particular patch. So if I had to talk and bring that up, as you can see, it's raising the volume of just this individual preset. This is really, really handy for if you've got a song, for example, where you're going to be singing in a lower register, your voice isn't going to cut through as much. You can or say you're going to be singing in more falsetto or more of a high range, again, where your voice might not be as loud. You can go to the preset and turn the vocal level trim up. Again, remember, you turn the vocal level trim up, it will pick up more of the background noise. So I use this vocal setting for, you know, your Kate Bush sort of out on the wily, windy moors we So that kind of thing. And again, I'll just boost that volume just a little bit if I need it. I will tell you also, after you've played around and you're happy with these um, presets, click store. Then you can choose here, store to which number preset you want. So you rotate that dial. Say you wanted to save it to like 100 and something. You would rotate that to save it wherever you want. You can move the cursor with this dial. You can change the letter with this dial, and you can also insert or delete here. So, and then once you've dialed, once you've um, played around with all those, press store, and then it will store your preset. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Brightside, this, this one, one has got, got just a very, very quick, quick delay, delay, but, but works, works really, really well, well on that 
Coming out of my cage and I'm just doing just fine. Gotta, gotta be down because I want it all. So for that kind of thing, it works really, really well. And the delay settings on that, if I go to my delay. Classic slap, apparently, is the setting. 25% on the feedback, minus three on the level. There you've got your tempo time, 141 BPM. The, again, the left and right settings are the same. We've got different low cuts and high cuts, which will probably give us a different sound. So again, a lot of this is trial and error. So let's come out of that one. There's a, a rainbow in the dark one. Word up. Again, I just use a bit of double and a, a bit of harmony. Whoa! On the sort of, uh, what's it? Put on those ass, you act real cool. You know, that kind of thing. But there, ah, this is quite a good one. Uh, Superstition Stevie Wonder. Now, this is a one I managed to find online. And what you can do, the great thing about this little unit, is you can plug it into your computer. You can download, obviously, different firmwares and update it. But you can also go on their site. I think um, there's sort of like a sound library, which you can go on and you can download sound patches that other people have made. So I have downloaded loads that are really, really handy. So this Stevie Wonder one's really good. I don't know what the hit does, but um, it brings up the double and reverb. So as you can see, it gives more of a kind of Stevie Wonder, very superstitious kind of sound. The killers, all, all these, these things, things that I've, I've done, done again. again. I want to stand up. I want to let go. You know, you know, no, no, you don't. Works, Works quite well. well. Radio Gaga. I use this one. Um, this works really well, the Radio Gaga one. Again, you can download this off the sound library. Uh, the harmonies. Oh, we hear is. I've got to get my pitching right. Oh, we hear is. Radio Gaga. Radio Goo Goo. Radio Blah Blah. Again, it is struggling a little bit because I have got the the uh, microphone level down quite low. If it was higher, it would pick them up a lot easier. But that gives a nice kind of a Queen 80s delay and reverb, and then you can bring in the harmony when you need it. Aussie Crazy Train. This is where I got that double sound from. So you got without. Crazy, but that's how it goes. Just sounds boring. Millions of people. Leaving us fools. Again, that's probably got. If we look at the actual settings of this, let's go in and have a quick nosy. Uh, delay. No, we want double. So now they've got a voice loose with 75% humanized. So it's going to really kind of move around a lot. And they've got the style on random, 80% on portamento that's to do with the sliding of the notes but see i wouldn't like that crazy that's how it goes that to me would be too loose i would probably tweak that crazy but that's how it goes i much prefer that slightly tighter so that's probably what i would go for we will rock you i think again this is a harmony one we will, we will rock you. That was a good guess, wasn't it? <laughs> it goes to show if you've been listening to songs long enough that when you can press a harmony button then you happen to be singing in the right key. So again, it's that delay and reverb and they programmed it for the harmony. Um, again, there's various ones where the streets have no name. I want to roam, I want to hide. So all of these are downloadable at the um, this sound library that you can get when you uh, plug in your TC Helicon and use the software on your computer. So I hope this has been of some help, ladies and gents. Sorry if it's a bit waffly, but 
it is what it is. It's quite a complex thing. Um, as I say, I will try and do some more in-depth videos on particular sounds and how to get better results from the parameters in these sounds. But for now, I hope this at least gives you a starting point that you can work from. Any questions, by all means, hit me up. I will try and help as much as I can. Um, so this video was a bit rushed because I wanted just to get out there just to help some people who, I don't know why my voice is cracking, I must be getting emotional for helping people. But um, this video was just done just to help some people and just get some ideas out there for you to work with. So thanks very much, everyone. Take care, all the best, and I shall see you soon. Bye-bye.